morning, everyone. I don't have a presentation for you. I'll just have a, a quick chat. I reflect some of the things that were said a bit earlier and some of the thoughts uh, that I will share with you. First, uh, to introduce it to Salat, we are an operator based in the United Arab Emirates and we operate in 16 countries. We have 155 million subscribers. And if we're looking at uh, the GSMA uh, ranking, we're about number 15 or 16 in size in the world. However, from a market cap ranking, we're number 10, much bigger. And there is a reason for that, and it's one of the things I'll talk about. For many years, the telecom industry was being disrupted by everyone. So we came to the world, we started with 2G, 3G, 4G, and we offered voice and data connectivity to people. And we had to charge for it. We had to pay a lot of license fee, a lot of spectrum fees, different things, and we had to make money for our investors, so we charged for it. And then we got disrupted by many people who came and used our pipes to offer services for free. And this, for many years, I think, was our dilemma, that we were being disrupted all the time. And I think in the last few years, this has started to turn around, where we as an industry are starting to look into other adjacencies and look at how we can disrupt them and how we can recover and gain some revenues back. I think Matt's have talked about uh, a, a, one of the operators in the United States buying big production and going into the streaming business. Other operators have gone into, uh, uh, they started, for example, from mobile, they went into fiber, they went into uh, TV uh, streaming at home. And now we are looking into things that are really successful in many markets. We see fintech being done and implemented very well by telcos. We have done that in few of our markets with great success. And there are also many operators that have started implementing things like wallets and so on. We also see things like consumer finance, like even providing microloans and nanoloans using the mobile as the identity. So there is a future for us to grow beyond where we are. Now I'll, I'll take a step back to last year where suddenly people realized how essential telecom is. People are very close with their phones. Many of them think it's a way to connect whether for business or for pleasure or with family. But the world would have stopped turning around last year if these networks and infrastructures that we have all built through the years have not been there. Suddenly, people had to work from home. Companies had to do all their business from home, from connecting to their customers, to doing customer care, to managing marketing, and finance, everybody had to stay home and work from home, or almost everybody. Children could not go to school anymore. So do we stop education? No, with the telecom infrastructures in all our markets, we were able to continue providing education for school kids all around the world. And suddenly people realize now that telecom is not just an is something that is extra, it's something that is essential. In fact, people are able to withstand losing electric power for a couple of hours, but now when they lose connectivity for a couple of hours, it's much bigger of a problem. That's how essential we have become. And because of that, we need to start looking into how we can use that and what we have, this immense amount of data that we're carrying. And we have to agree that we are not anymore into the voice business. So even though voice is still there as part of our revenue, the real business today is data. Even voice on our networks, as we are now using Volta and as 5G is rolled out in m many of our markets, even voice is becoming part of that data. So there is a huge amount of data that we pass. 
And the whole challenge we have is how we can monetize that data both through the customers, but how can we build other things that can generate revenue for the industry using that data. We have started looking a few years back at this. We started a division uh, at the group level that operates in most of our countries uh, called uh, Enterprise Digital or Etosalat Enterprise Digital that have gone beyond just selling telecoms to our customers to selling full solutions. So we're using that data. We have partnered, for example, with the road authority in the United Arab Emirates, where we provide all the traffic flow data so that they can redirect the traffic and rush hours, that they can manage the bus service and so on, using the big data from our network. We have worked with uh, many of uh, the different uh, areas for, uh, for example, uh, shopping malls, for managing footfall, understanding more what is happening, when do customers come, where do the customers come, spending patterns and so on, and we were able to also monetize that data. Security is a big issue. Both security that is physical and as telecom, now with 4G networks, even much more with 5G networks, we're able to connect cameras in many places then we use things like AI to be able to interpret these cameras. And now we have solutions that's running, again, in many places in our footprint, not only in the United Arab Emirates, but we implement that in Saudi Arabia, in Egypt, in Morocco, where cameras using AI are able to identify threats, security issues, accidents, all kinds of things, and report and raise the right alarm at the right time. And again, when you sell this as a solution rather than as data connectivity, it's much more valuable for the customers and creates revenue streams for us in the industry. Then there is the cybersecurity, and I think cybersecurity, and again, speaking here in Bosco, I think you, you are for us, you know, one of the leading countries in this, and many companies in cybersecurity originate uh, from Russia. And cybersecurity is very important for many of our customers, whether these gover uh, uh, government customers or private sector. And again, we have been working to provide cybersecurity. We partner with companies from Russia, from other parts of the world, and provide the best solutions for our customers, but we do the integration inside our markets. So by doing all these things, we are able to grow our uh, base of customers, uh, grow our list of services that we're able to charge for. And this is one of the reasons why we are trading at a bit of a premium to many of the other operators uh, that uh, uh, around the world. We are trying to do this in consumer as well. We have a TV business, so we aggregate TV content and we have a streaming business that we uh, uh, manage in uh, uh, more of our markets, of course we have an advantage, but you also here have an advantage, which is the language. So when we are able to aggregate some of the Arabic language uh, content, we can do that and compete even with the big guys coming from uh, Hollywood. We can still compete because we are closer to the source of these kind of programming uh, and this type of content. Also on the FinTech. So in the FinTech, we have wallets in, almost in all our markets. We have launched now, uh, uh, let's say, lending services in several of our markets. We even, in two of our markets, we own banks that offer full banking services, more, of course, on the digital side. And this is also helping us get more revenue streams and protecting us and creating more stickiness to the customers as the customers depend on us, not only for their communication needs, but for more than that. I think a topic that uh, also uh, I will touch about is 5G. So given that we have a variety of markets, we have markets that are very advanced and are already getting to maturity on 5G. So for example, uh, the home market, the United Arab Emirates, uh, and another one of our markets, which is Saudi Arabia, we are now at almost the 40, 50% coverage of 5G, and we are in the urban cities 
in the big urban centers like uh, Abu Dhabi and Dubai and Riyadh and Jeddah and so on, we are at a point where we are almost now at 90% coverage with 5G. So really advanced. The interesting thing is, in addition to what Matt said, which is enterprise, we think there's also a lot of potential in the consumer side. Today, we are carrying 10% of our total, or close to 10% of our total data traffic on the 5G network. And this is providing actually a lower cost per gigabyte than the 4G network. So it's really helping us uh, in terms of managing our OPEX as well. And of course, as that coverage grows, and as we uh, provide a 5G pure play, because today we are using, again, some of the components of uh, the, the 4G network uh, together with the 5G, that will even improve further. And we see applications today, not only streaming, but things like gaming, which is becoming more and more popular. And 5G really uh, is becoming very attractive for people that are doing it because, of course, of the low latency and the very fast speeds. And I have, of course, to do a little bit of bragging because yesterday we won the award for the fastest uh, mobile network in the world from Ookla. As you know, this is a speed test. So yesterday we got for the second year in a row uh, the fastest mobile network in the world in, in our home market. And we are, we are very excited about that. Uh, but the idea is we are doing it not just to get an award. We are doing it because, again, connecting with the customers and actually, the customers are having pride of being connected to a network that is really fast and providing them all of these services. So, to just summarize uh, what I'm saying, I think there is still a future to us. We have the chance not to become the utility that we were being pushed in the last few years by uh, uh, the people coming from the uh, dot-com side pushing us to become an, a utility, to become a pipe, I think we have the potential to become more. It needs a lot of courage. It needs, of course, investment, but it needs also the focus on the customer, understanding the customer. Also, when I'm talking big data and so on, it is very, very important to also manage very well the privacy concerns of our customers. So this is essential. This is one of the things that will also define how we succeed in the coming years. Again, thank you for the invitation and really happy to be with, here with you today. Thank you. Thank you.